Hey, how is everybody? Lou from RV Habit. I have a six gallon Atwood gas electric water heater and I'm having some problem with the gas part of it. Uh, it does work on electric, but the gas will not light. And if it does light, it'll only stay on for two or three uh, seconds and then shut right back off. So I'm gonna do some general maintenance today, cleaning it up. I'm also gonna check some components to make sure everything's working properly. Let's start. So before I start, I just want to explain what everything is in case you're unfamiliar with this. This is an overflow valve. Uh, if your water tank builds up too much pressure, this will release and water will come out of here. It's not uncommon to see this weep occasionally. Uh, that just needs, means the system needs to be burped. There's an air pocket there and uh, that's pretty easy to do. You turn your water off. You turn your electric and gas off and you just open this until the water levels out and then close it and then you've got that air pocket again. But moving on, this is your control board and this is the brains of it. And this, this basically tells the system what to do. So inside you have an electric switch and a gas switch and you can activate either one. Depending on what one you activate, it sends a current into the control board. Now if it's electric, it'll send a current into the control board It'll come down this brown wire here to this thermal fuse, which is attached to the thermostat. If the thermostat is below, I believe it's 140 degrees, it's preset from the factory. It will allow current to pass through to this wire here. This wire now travels back into the control board. Again, if it's electric, it'll send a current back to behind the water heater where the electric element is and it'll activate the electric element. If you have it on gas, when the current comes up into the control board, the control board says, oh, it needs gas. It'll send the current down to this red wire to your ECO, which is a protection switch. If it's over 180 degrees, uh, this protects the system from not activating. As long as it's under 180 degrees, the switch will allow current to go through the switch to these red wires to the solenoid which will, I'm sorry, to the gas valve, which will activate the solenoids, which will allow gas to pass through this tube. Once gas passes through this tube and the solenoids are activated, this is your sparker and this will spark until the gas lights. It'll try three times. So once it starts, it'll, it'll see that it has a flame and send a little current back to the control board that says everything's right. My problem is, is it's lighting, but it's going out. So the control board's shutting everything down after three attempts. So I'm going to just clean everything up. I could see this thermal fuse has a lot of corrosion on it. I'm gonna check for continuity there, make sure it's good. Uh, I'll clean this up. I'm gonna take this tube off. This is what I hope it is, that this is just dirty. Maybe has a spider web in there or something. There's also a little jet in there that uh, could be clogged. It seems like the solenoid is activating and allowing gas to come through because it will light sometimes, it just will not stay lit. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is take these wires off, I'm gonna clean them and I'll check some, uh, some continuity with my uh, multimeter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this thermal fuse here. And a thermal fuse is basically just just that. If it gets too hot, it's going to snap and it'll shut everything down. And yeah, there's a little corrosion in there. So we'll clean that up. If I can get this off here. There we go. So looking at it, it's basically there's a thin wire in there with the and if this gets too hot, that wire will snap and it'll shut everything down. It's a safety, safety feature in case fire, if you, know, you have uncontrollable gas flame or something like that. And I'm gonna check this for continuity to make sure I, that this is good. So I'll get my volt multimeter. Okay, so I have my multimeter and it makes a sound when I get good continuity. I'm just going to attach it to each end to make sure I got good continuity here. And I don't have good continuity. So that being dirty, as 
you can see, it's not steady. So it's obviously not blown because occasionally I can get that, but this may be dirty enough where I'm not getting a good connection. So I'm gonna clean this up. We'll put that here. And I'm also gonna take this off because I do wanna clean this regardless of what the problem is. So let's get that. Now again, these are held on by uh, four screws. This is the hardest one to get to. The other ones you can get to with a driver, but this one, you gotta get a little socket in there to get it off. So I have all the screws out and this is a little boot that covers the sparker. I'm just gonna pull this wire gently and it's just a spade uh, connection as you can see. And then this kind of clips on the solenoid here. I mean the uh, valve and you're just going to wiggle it out. And there we go. Now looking at it, doesn't actually look too bad. I do see two problems though, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them. This is starting to crack on this igniter. I can see all a bunch of cracked uh, casing here. And you see this, this little item here, this should be centered in a tube and you can see it's way off to the upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna adjust that also. That may be a problem also. So I'm gonna check this for continuity because that is definitely cracked. Although this was sparking fine, uh, it does does show a crack. So let's just, let's just put this in here like this. We'll make that connection. So that That has good continuity, but being that it's starting to crack, I will probably order a new one to replace that. And it's this whole piece comes with it. This is the sparker. This is a grounding rod. When a flame comes, a spark reads that there's a flame and sends a little current back through this item here. Very important. So I probably will order a new one since this is starting to crack. And I'm gonna adjust this after I clean the tube. First things first, I'm gonna clean the thermal fuse here. So I sanded this spade bit here on the top of the thermal fuse. You can see it was all black and corroded. Now I got a nice clean brass connection. And if I show you how much better the continuity is. Stick this in here. See that now I get a nice solid no matter where I touch that spade bit. I'm getting good continuity. So we'll plug that back in here. It's a little loose. I'm gonna crimp that a little bit with my pliers. I don't like it to be that loose. Just get a little squeeze. Now we'll see. And these are actually good to have on hand. If I had another one, I would just replace it. I may order, since I have to order uh, a sparker, I might just order one of these two. And I'm gonna stick this back on here. And that's perfect. So I'm also gonna take off this little jet here to see if that's got any blockage in it. And this just unscrews. Make sure no bugs have gotten back there. And I'll blow it clean. You don't wanna stick anything in that little orifice that could damage it. This is very soft brass. 
So I'm just going to remove this. If I don't lose it. Ah, I got it. It actually looks really good, but I'm just going to go blow it clean too before I put everything back together. So I took some compressed air and I blew it through that little orifice there. Again, don't stick anything through there. You'll damage it. If you uh, change the diameter of that hole, it will not work properly. So, and I don't need any type of gas tape or anything to put this back in. You're just going to screw it right back in until it's snug. So here's where I'm at. I've reinstalled that uh, little jet uh, and just blew some air through it. I've cleaned this all up. I took some sandpaper, some light sandpaper, and sanded some of the rust off. I've cleaned inside the tube. There's no spider webs or anything. And that flame diverter, I've centered as best I could. And I've also checked this gap between this grounding rod and the sparker should be one eighth inch and uh, adjusted that so it's exactly one eighth inch. So now all I got to do is get this back on. I'll just slide that on in there. And it snaps under the solenoid, the uh, valve. And we'll get the screws back in. Do the hardest one first. So I have this all attached to four screws back. I'm going to plug the igniter back in and put the boot on. And I'm also going to connect the gas valve solenoid wire back to the ECO. Now all my wires are connected. Now this adjusts the air. So you'll need more, it'll be more open if your altitude is high or lower if your altitude is low. And uh, if this lights, I'll show you how to adjust that. You, you don't want it to roar like a, a, a jet engine. You want it to be nice and quiet, but with a blue flame. So I'm gonna kind of leave it there for now. And let's see if it works. So here's what I've done. I've, I've turned the switch to the gas on inside and I've unplugged the control board so I can plug it in and, and activate it from out here and uh, we're gonna see if this lights. Now, again, this, this was a problem, but I think I cleaned that up. This does have a crack in it, so that may still be a problem, but we're gonna plug it in. We'll see if we get any power, any gas. Oh, it lit right up. And you can see it. Oh, it's stuttering a little bit. See how loud that was? And as you can see how quiet it is now. And I don't know if you could see in there, if you could see the flame in this sunlight, probably not. But that flame is solid blue and running perfect. Now, this is where you adjust that, the air to gas mixture, see? so. You'll hear a lot of times, if your hot water heater is doing this and sounds like that, that's too much air. You come here and just loosen this screw and you're just going to move it back. You get a little sound, you want a nice blue flame. And I think that's just about perfect. And then we can tighten that screw up. And this will need to be adjusted at times. And again, it depends on your altitude. If you're real high uh, altitude and stuff, this is going to be more open. You're going to allow more air in there. But as you can see, this is running beautiful now. That is a deep blue flame. Uh, everything worked. I'm going to order these two parts just to have them because that's going. And uh, that definitely was a problem. This is routine maintenance you should actually do at least once a year. 
I neglected it. This has gone two years. That's why you see this. This is so bad. But uh, it cleans up well. And uh, again, I hope this helped you out. And uh, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon.